that moment when I first saw a panda actually in front of my eyes, it was I think one of the most beautiful moments of my life. My life's purpose probably uh, changed. I just wanted to let everyone know about this feeling that I was feeling that time. I wanted to tell the story of red pandas and how endangered they were. I'd always wanted to make a film about red pandas. I was so much in love with them. That time, three years ago, they had recently been declared endangered from vulnerable, which meant the drive to make a film about them to create awareness was stronger than ever before. So red pandas are also called a fire fox. They're endangered. And that's majorly because of pet trade. They get poached from the wild to be sold as pets across the world. Another major threat to them is habitat loss because they have this very specific habitat requirement, which is high altitude bamboo forests, cloud forests. These are these beautiful forests um, in the eastern Himalayas. The Himalayan landscape is unparalleled. Uh, you see these mountains, huge ice cap mountains in the background. We went in April, so we had these beautiful rhododendron trees which were in full bloom. I think the Himalayas are both fragile and powerful at the same time, this mighty force. We were trekking 12,000 feet up in the mountains and it was really bad weather on some days. Uh, these forests get really treacherous in the rain. There were times where we wouldn't even see anything inside the forest because there was there would be so much uh, fog and like clouds all around us. We, there was zero visibility. Tracking the red panda is really difficult in the wild because they don't leave uh, claw marks or pug marks. So you have to follow these really precise signs. Tiny nibbles on the bamboo leaves. If you see one, you try to follow where these nibbles lead. We had the help of the local communities. I don't think I could have ever done it without their help. A lot of these trackers that Red Panda Network uses were formerly poachers. And nobody is a poacher because it's their childhood dream, right? They're poachers because uh, they have no other option. Now they're looking for them for ecotourism and to help them. So they have this traditional knowledge that they bring with them. I am still in touch with uh, the people I've worked with. And they're one of the sweetest people, the most humble, the most caring people I've ever met. We were searching for red pandas every single day and we were coming back in the evening disappointed because we hadn't found one and a lot was riding on uh, finding a red panda, right? I was making a film about red pandas with this uncertainty whether I was going to find a red panda or not. And, like we would just go and work so hard every single day, trek for hours and like 12,000 feet and come back with nothing. I, I felt I was hallucinating, I felt like every little tree had this red panda sitting on it and then <laughs> all these trackers would laugh at me they'd be like no that's not a red panda it's just moss and that happened so many times uh, which is why when i actually saw a red panda i was like oh moss they're like no red panda the fourth day of our shoot um, we were filming interviews in the village and we got a call from one of the trackers that they'd spotted a baby around we were super excited because it was like days of uh, trekking and coming back hopelessly but just ran with whatever we could gather and went in that direction. The red panda habitat was still around uh, like five hours away. Then we finally got there. I couldn't believe my eyes at first and I kept saying that, okay, is that really a red panda? And they were like, yes, because the panda was like a little uh, curled up ball at that time. And then the panda lifted his head and looked at us and we were just uh, sold. We were uh, completely mesmerized by this beautiful living creature. I thought that it would just run away. So we were filming it, but then the panda was incredibly calm in our presence. I just stared at him in awe and it was, I think, one of the most beautiful moments of my life.
I think that moment when I first saw a panda actually in front of my eyes, I my life's purpose probably uh, changed. I just wanted to let everyone know about this feeling that I was feeling that time. It's been three years since I first saw that red panda, but that love for them continues and advocating for them continues. So I speak to school children, college children, talk to them about red pandas. I speak to as many people as I can. We conduct uh, film screenings, we conduct seminars for them. And uh, even people from um, uh, rural backgrounds, just telling them about what conservation is, what red pandas are in the first place. This encounter taught me the importance of making powerful films and the role of local communities in conservation. We cannot get anywhere without getting the help of local communities and working with people who are at the grassroots on the front lines of conservation. For these local communities, it's a way of life. It is uh, precious to them. It's their forest, they're their animals. So for them, there is no other option. They have to save them because they're theirs. So they have the sense of ownership towards the forest, towards each other, towards these species. If you work hand in hand with the local communities, the species can thrive. More than anything else, I want red pandas to be safe. With continued efforts and with local communities working all across the world in red panda range, I think it is possible. I am very hopeful that they will do better very soon.